April 22nd. So today we do have the moon in Libra all day. And of course, the whole point of the moon in Libra is to find peace and harmony and balance and compromise. But of course, as the moon kind of moves through the Libra energy, we have to go through all stages, starting with identifying the areas, the problematic sectors of our life that don't have those things, identify the issue, identify some, let's call them problem solving techniques, try to implement those in order to achieve the balance, the peace, the harmony towards the end of the transit. And of course, we are definitely going to have a good challenge on our hands here today to find peace and harmony and balance because there's a lot of energy building up trying to trigger and activate our shadow selves. Why is that, you may ask? Well, it's because we are heading into a full moon in Scorpio, which of course is all about shadow work, all about the change and transformation, the let's call it alchemy of the darker parts of our inner realm into something more powerful, into something more workable. So we have this great conjunction pop off between Jupiter and Uranus. Of course, that is going to kind of unearth a lot of those shadow parts within us. We have to hold those shadow parts very much accountable so that as we move into the full moon in Scorpio, we know exactly what it is that we have to eliminate, release, purge, change, transform in order for us to find a new sense of self, a new sense of wholeness, a new sense of completion. So that is why everybody is kind of all scattered all over the place, not feeling as happy go lucky as one would hope. Because again, the full moon in Scorpio is supposed to be intense in order to illuminate the darker parts of self. That is what needs to change, needs to transform before we're going to be able to move forward and start manifesting, start physically bringing into physical form some of the new wants, needs, desires, dreams, goals, and visions. So this is also Earth Day on a Monday that is ruled over by the moon. The moon is feminine energy. Earth Day, Mother Earth, Gaia is feminine energy. There is Venus who's in her rulership here in Taurus season. Again, feminine energy. And if you haven't realized as of yet, the feminine energy is on the rise. We are shifting out of his story and moving into her story. The moon in Libra energy will be going void, of course, at 725 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But we won't be locking into Scorpio energy until 1121 a.m. Tuesday morning, which, of course, is the full moon day. So we are definitely going to see an intensity throughout the day here today to try and tweak, if you will, our mind space, our heart space, our perspective on what needs to change, what needs to transform in order for us to find that peace and harmony and balance within ourselves once again. There are 12 different aspects taking place here today. 11 of them are going to involve the moon on a moon day, emotionally redefining what we want, we need, we desire. So we're in for a little bit of a doozy. Okay, so we kick the day off, the moon in Libra directly opposing, sitting across from the north node in Aries energy. Of course, an opposition doesn't feel good, creates tension and conflict in order for us to realize where action and decision is needed in order for us to grow and heal and repair and improve a certain situation, especially where our emotions are concerned, especially where, again, reconciling relationship dynamics are concerned. There is this push and pull between what we need to be doing for ourselves on an independent solo quest or adventure versus what we feel like we need to be doing in order to restore and reconcile and kind of repair some relationship dynamics. Again, reminder, the moon in Libra, this is kind of like a flashback to the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra, March 25th, that opened up that eclipse energy. That was a lunar eclipse. Lunar energy removes things, especially where it is that we're overly giving other people our power in relationship dynamics. So this is kind of like a refresher and giving us an option, a choice point. There's one path that is going to honor thyself. Another path is going to honor other people. 
the moon is then going to make a very harsh interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over our roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. This isn't going to feel good, not supposed to. It is a very harsh reality check on where it is that we need to grow up where it is that we need to boss up, where it is that we have to understand that we can't go back to what once was, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. Now we have an opportunity to strengthen, to stabilize, or to totally pivot and try something new, build something new, bring something new to life that will help us for the long term. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction first with Uranus, then with Jupiter. Those two, of course, just conjuncted each other for the first time in 14 years. This is the ripple effect that we are now sitting in. This is why there is some, let's call it, uneasy energies now coming to the surface because we just closed out a 14 year old chapter. We're just opening the door up to a new one. Adjustment periods are never easy. It highlights the sadness, the grief, the ending, the closure of one part of our lives, and it illuminates the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that we're holding on to in anticipation of starting something new. The moon interacting with Uranus, first of all, is going to send a jolt through our system. We are going to gain a little bit of clarity, more specifically on what we have to do, what we have to change, what we have to transform in our relationship dynamics. Secondly to that, the interaction with Jupiter is going to, first of all, give us a lot more confidence and optimism to see the options that we didn't see earlier, see the opportunities that we have to make a change, to make a transformation in our physical realm where certain structures are concerned. You know, Uranus and Jupiter are in Taurus energy. That's the physical body. That's the physical form. That's the physical realm and reality that we all live in. That is the very basics of how it is that we feel about ourselves, the routines that we have, how we take care of ourselves, the relationship dynamics that we have, the money matters that we now have, and now the long-term goals that we're trying to piece together. So again, another shake up, another wake up in order for us to realize that there are two very different paths, different different choices, different decisions, different directions now being offered to us. One, again, really solidifies getting to know thyself and the other, again, is going to take us away from that solo quest, from that solo adventure. We're all at different points in our path. We all need to kind of align with the new truth, new mission, new purpose. This is going to translate in different ways for different people. Now, here's where things get sticky. 8-11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is then going to directly oppose and sit across from Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who is currently retrograde in this Aries energy. Libra energy and Aries energy sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. Aries energy is about thyself. What do I need? What do I want? What do I desire? What do I have to do? What do I have to pursue? The Libra energy is about the team, the group, the partnership. Again, backburnering our own wants, needs, and desires to put other people's wants, needs, and desires ahead of our own. Again, huge life lesson that we are currently in because of the eclipse energies on this Aries and Libra axis. So the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. We're sitting across the table from one another. We're not on the same page at all. We're trying to compromise. We're trying to meet in the middle. However, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, is looking back at who it is that we have been in relationship dynamics, whether that is a favorable perspective or not. We have a lot to learn on where it is that more often times than not, we gave our power away. We backburnered our own wants, needs, and desires to honor other people, to give them more power over our lives than we gave ourselves. Now, this particular reflection back is really going to stir a lot of shadow parts up within us because again we're looking to eliminate the people pleasing behaviors we're looking to drop the mask we're looking to get real and raw and vulnerable in the relationship dynamic with ourselves first and foremost 3 55 p.m so quite a gap there the moon in libra is going to sit across from directly oppose chiron the wounded healer also in this Aries energy. So again, we are taking a good look at our ego identity, 
who it is that we had to be in the past, who it is that we currently are in this present moment, who it is that we are trying to become in order to match the vibration, the frequency of the goal, the vision, the dreams that we now want to manifest. So of course, there's a disconnect here. We're disconnected between this new version of self and how it is that we are feeling looking back on where it is that we've given our power away to other people instead of harnessing within it ourselves. This is going to bring up a major struggle, major conflict within ourselves, likely project outwardly into our relationship dynamics. We're super sensitive about our feelings because we're not feeling balanced. We're not feeling that peace. We're not feeling that inner harmony, which puts us in a very tough situation. We're more reactive out of our ego selves than we are responding out of our higher selves. So this is like a battle royale to figure out where it is that we're on a certain path that does require a certain amount of time for us to stand alone, for us to be traveling in a certain path, in a certain direction on a solo quest, on a solo adventure. And again, that has a huge impact on how it is that we have to, again, create distance, energy, and space between some of the people in our lives that, again, we've given too much power, time, energy, and attention to. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Aries energy is going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. Venus rules over that Taurus energy that Uranus is in. This is our heart space receiving a huge amount of insight, a huge amount of clarity on where it is that we have to boss up, be a little bit more blunt and straightforward with how it is that we're thinking, how it is that we're feeling, where it is that we've had a change of heart, what it is that we now need to be doing for ourselves and what it is that we now need from the people that we're choosing to share time, energy, and space with. This is definitely going to rattle some feathers. This is definitely going to shake up us up, wake us up and understand where it is that we are being called to pursue a path that may not be a path that we are bringing other people on. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn. Thank goodness, a very, very dramatic contrast to the earlier interaction, if I do say so myself. And so we're finally starting to realize the opportunities that we now have to build something beautiful, build something strong, build something that's going to kind of last the end of times, if you will. We're shifting our belief system. We're shifting our perspective. We're releasing and purging a lot of that heaviness, a lot of that weight, a lot of that obligation and commitment that we've made to other people that we're just not feeling in alignment with anymore. We're starting to realize where it is that we've been too self-sacrificial in compromising our own wants, needs, and desires, and in a lot of cases, our own values just to make other people happy. We realize where that cannot continue. We realize what it is that we're being called to do and pursue on a solo independent quest and adventure. And therefore, we are gaining a lot more clarity on what needs to go in order for us to actually proceed on this new path, in this new quest, in this new adventure. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Uranus. So just when we gain some clarity, just when we're feeling a little bit hopeful, a little bit good about some of the things that we've been percolating on, the dark force entity is going to come in and start really rubbing us the wrong way so that we see the shadow parts of self that need to come out to play under this full moon in Scorpio. So the moon interacting with Uranus in this way, suddenly we're confused about our path. Suddenly we're feeling not so bold and brave and courageous to do what we have to do to break off into the solo quest and adventure. Suddenly we are not open to new ideas. Suddenly we're not open to new methods, new ways of doing things. And we find ourselves kind of backpedaling, trying to convince ourselves that guess what? Change isn't that great. Evolving growth isn't that great. Bossing up and empowerment isn't that great. Maybe we should settle. Maybe we should just continue doing what it is that we've always done and continue to get what it is that we've always gotten. Maybe we need to be happy with that. Now, again, that is the egoic programming kicking in in order to keep us in a state of paralysis, not growing, not evolving. Whether you choose to let that programming and conditioning win, that is up to you. 
The moon is then going to directly oppose Venus. Venus, of course, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She rules over the Libra energy that the moon is currently in, but Venus is in Aries energy. So this is going to be an emotional struggle, if you will, to truly identify the change of heart that we've had to get real and raw and vulnerable with the change of heart in which we're having, what that actually means for our relationship dynamics, what that means for our happiness, for our joy, for our long-term goals. And again, major shakeup, major wake up coming out of this eclipse portal on relationship dynamics. What has to change? Doesn't necessarily mean that we're cutting people off, although in some cases that is definitely needed. But we do need to kind of tweak the energetic boundaries, the energetic exchange in order to free us up to be more independent, to have a little bit more time, energy, and space to ourselves, to figure out who it is that we are without the influence of all these other energies trying to push us into a version of ourselves that we are just not going to be anymore. And so again, the power struggle ensues. It is at this particular point that the moon is going to go void, of course. And again, we have a huge chunk of time that the moon will be void. We also have to understand that when the moon does go void. Things are shaky. Things are uncertain. Things are unstable for good reason. We have to be illuminated to those ideas, to those thoughts, to those emotions, to those memories that are creeping up, trying to prevent us from growing, from evolving. While the moon is void, we still have this moon in Libra making some tough interactions. First with Jupiter, again, planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Taurus energy. And then with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, who of course is in Pisces energy, trying to wrap up a cycle, trying to close the door on past pain and trauma, old ideas, old visions, old pursuits, in order to emotionally, spiritually, intuitively align with a new truth, new mission, new purpose, new quest, a new deeper meaning for what it is that we want to do in life, what we want to take action upon, what we want to build, what we want to create. So we have this tough interaction with Jupiter sucking the optimism out of us, sucking the confidence out of us, really narrowing our vision, really kind of closing the door on some of the options and opportunities that we were semi exploring earlier on in the day. We're very small in this particular energy and we're not feeling emotionally motivated or inspired to break out of it right now because again, the moon is void. When we enter into the realm of the moon, making a tough aspect with Mars, this is going to trigger the frustration, the agitation, the anger that needs to come to the surface in order for us to realize where it is that we do not feel in control. We do not feel in power where we do not feel like we're being supported or encouraged or inspired or motivated to do the things that we need to be doing for ourselves. So again, we have to understand that there is a lot of power struggle going on in relationship dynamics right now. Even if you are not having a full-blown beef with people in your life, the inner realm of argument that you're having silently with these people in order to try and advocate for yourself, that is what has to be acknowledged. That is what has to change. That is what has to transform. And you may not even have to have these kind of conversations because this is an inner realm thing. Realizing where it is that you've overextended your love, your attention, your kindness, your happiness, your joy to people that you've given too much power to that are not reciprocating the same kind of energies. And therefore, why do you continue to give so much of yourself when you're not getting anything in return? This should be a reality check. And again, moving into the full moon Scorpio energy, we get to kind of restructure, redesign our inner realm of emotion, of intuition, of our spirit, of our soul in order for us to take our power back.